everybody, it's Sloan from Lens Crafts. I'm coming by to share a tutorial I did a couple of years ago. It has terrible lighting and it's a really cruddy video. Um, and I talk way too much in the video. So I just thought I'd come by and share a fresh copy of the tutorial. This is a sheet of Primo Translucent. And it's rolled out on my thinnest setting on the pasta machine. On the clay rolling machine. <laughs> and on my machine, that's a 9. It may be a 1 on your machine. If you're rolling it by hand, just get it as thin as you can. I've also got just a tiny bit of red. Um, and this could be anything. This could be Sculpey. Um, it could be Sculpey 3. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be... Um, as stable as the Primo. It can be brittle. It's going to be inside. Alright, I've got two colors of the Ranger Ancient Gold line, and this is the Princess Gold, and this one is the Tarnished Gold. I've got a little bit of Microfine Glitter. This can be basically any brand of Microfine Glitter. They basically work equally well um, inside clay. If you have just craft glitter, it can work, but it will tend to pop up out of the top of the cabochon. It'll have a porcupine kind of look, and you'll need to sand it back off. And then I've got some gold flakes, and this just happens to be um, indigo blue mega flakes in the chocolate box. Alright, I've got just a plain old palette knife. And I'm just going to start with the embossing powder. And it's totally random. However, however you want to put it on, just lightly. Because the embossing powder, the glitter, the uh, gold flakes will all make the clay not want to stick back together quite as well. the embossing powders. Now just a little glitter. The glitter you'll want to scatter a little thinner. And then with the gold flakes, I suggest just a, just a soft brush. And we're just going to put it just randomly, and I mean totally randomly. A little here, a little there, and not much anywhere else. <laughs> We're not trying to cover the whole sheet. Alright, that's pretty good. Gather all your flakes back into the jar, though. Because they will become airborne. And try to do it with the fan off. Alright, to the red. I'm just going to chop this up in totally random pieces. No rhyme or reason. And same thing, I'm going to lay them down the same way. And you're going to lay them down opposite. Which is totally not necessary. <laughs> That's why I really enjoy this technique because you really can't mess it up. Now 
Now the red is a really strong color. And what I mean by that is it's going to want to, um, it's going to cause some opaqueness in the cabochon. The um, translucent clay will still cover the surface. And the reason that I put it on in this order, the embossing powder first, then the glitter, then the gold flakes, then the, then the red, goodness, is so that that will be, the embossing powder will show up on the outside of the cabochon, the smaller particles to the outside. And you'll see what I mean as I roll it up. I'm going to start at one end and do a little fold and then just start rolling it up trying not to get too much air trapped in the roll all right just like that now We're just going to keep combining it to try to get the air out the best that we can and compacting it. And yes, my hands are blue. It's the, it's the Deco Art Media Mister. in the turquoise. Alright, now this still has um, quite a bit of air in it. I'm just going to slice around here and there just to let a little bit of it out. Again, not really necessary when you see what we're going to do with it. <laughs> Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. Let's stick it back together. And then I'm just going to give it a twist. Alright, and then you can just start slicing off whatever you think will be the prettiest bit. And I can see some of the gold leafing right here. So I'm going to take the cut end. And just smash it together so that it covers that cut end. And I'm going to do that on both ends even though the other end wasn't cut. Alright. Then I'm just going to take it in the palm of my hands. Hopefully the blue will stay on my hand. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to choose an area that I really like. And it's looking like there or there. I'm, I'm going with right here, I believe. All right, and then I'm just going to grab a baking towel. And I always form my cabochons by hand. I always have. I probably should... <laughs> I have some cabochon molds by now, but I just don't. But if you don't as well, grab yourself a 
teaspoon, a true teaspoon. Just checking the surface. If you turn it at your own eye level, you'll be able to tell if the doming on top is even or off center. Alright, I like that pretty well. Now just to true up the sides a little bit. I'm just going to use a stamping block. And if you don't have one, most craft stores have them where they sell the stamps. It's made for adhering um, uh -huh, uh, rubber stamps too. Alright, then I'm just going to bake this. I'm going to bake it at 275 for 40 minutes. Alright, here it is out of the oven. I have sanded it and polished it on my bench grinder. And these are the sanding discs that I'm using. They're micro mesh sanding discs and I just bought them off of eBay I'm sure you can find them on Amazon um, or you can just use several grits of some wet dry sandpaper some higher grits over a thousand alright you can do this in any color you can use paint acrylic paint instead of the polymer clay and just let it dry before you roll it up I've done a video on that as well. So, a fun technique which will give you endless results. Um, that's one of my favorite things about it is it looks different every time and there's no predicting how it'll turn out. Alright, that's it for today. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.